Indiana Outdoor Adventures TV show is coming on and don't you know they've got a new adventure planned just for you you'll be wishing you were in the Indiana Outdoors too it may be hunting could be fishing keeping alive some old tradition from the days of long ago well head on out without a doubt with us you can go on the indiana outdoor adventures tv show welcome to indiana outdoor adventures we really do have an adventure today we're out doing some ice fishing now here in the southern third of indiana it's probably been three years since you could even safely get out on the ice but this year, it's one of the coldest winters in the last 20, 30 years. I think every week since, well, since New Year's, we've had snow closings and government office closings and ice storms and road hazards. But what it has done, it's given us a nice solid base of ice on all the lakes and ponds uh, here in the southern half of Indiana. So almost all of Indiana is open for ice fishing this year. Now I'm out with uh, uh, Jeremy and Cable. We're on uh, a small farm pond, and we're already catching uh, a lot of bluegill and having a lot of fun. And we're going to see just what all we can pull through our ice today. We've got uh, ice poles, we got holes cut in the ice, and we got uh, fish that we're reeling in. We're just uh, out here having a good old winter weather ice fishing adventure. There he goes. There he is. Well, that's better one, I think. fish cable there's a nice gill that's what we're looking for right there you'll notice my fish piles a little bit more than Jeremy's he's trying to keep catch up so we got to get back in well there he goes he's got one though not that it's a competition no <laughs> Jeremy and I never compete there. That makes it worthwhile. We'll get back into water here and see if we can't get another one. It's a pretty good gill. Might want to give Jeremy a heads up of what you're doing. <laughs> no, I like catching him off guard. <laughs> Jeremy, tell me what the secret to your success is. Well, wax worms. What we normally use, we're dropping all the way down to the bottom. We're bringing it up six inches to a foot and jigging it just a little bit every once in a while. Uh, maybe a whole lot of luck. I don't know. <laughs> how, how deep is the water here and how deep do you think, or how thick is the ice? We're about probably 14, 15 foot deep. And the ice, I'm going to say eight to nine inches. But great ice we fished started two weeks ago. This cold front that we had come in and it was eight inches the first day we went out and it hasn't given any. We got a little warm spell and the ice got a little slushy on top but it's froze back. It's great shape. So I don't know. Hopefully we get back into them. We've got several so far but try to get a good mess for us. Oh yeah, it's a good gill. Oh yeah. Nice gill. There, 
that's how we're going to do it. Oh, yeah. That's why we come out in the middle of the winter. Catch some nice bluegill and have some fun with friends and kind of kill some time between hunting season and the summer fishing season. That'll work. Oh yeah, look at that worm. Look at that guys. I gotta tighten that drag up so I can just get it up. Look at, oh, looky there. That's the way to catch some fish. Here you go, Troy, let me help you out here. Watch. One, <laughs> two, three. Oh, look at there. <laughs> that might seem a little obvious there. <laughs> That's dandy there. Get this one back in the water. That was two. That was two nice gills right there together. Yeah. Did you see that? Did you catch that, Jeremy? Yes. If you didn't see it, you can watch it on TV <laughs> in, in a little bit. You can see how it happened. <laughs> so we've got a record of it, don't we, Troy? That's right. It's been documented. <laughs> This one swallowed it, so we got a little bit of a problem here. Cable, we're out here in uh, the snow, <laughs> and we, we, we got some uh, uh, grubs, and uh, we got some jig heads, and you're catching some fish. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty good day so far. We've, uh, we've been out here maybe 60 minutes or so, and uh, we've drilled four holes, and we've probably got all 30 fish so far. Um, been a real good real good day we've got about eight inches of ice and uh, we're fishing in about 15 15 feet of water I'll pull one up here and show you our setup <laughs> and uh, basically we just have a little ice fishing uh, ice fishing rig right here I've just got a uh, uh, pink head with a couple sinkers on to get it down and uh, we go down to the bottom we hit the bottom and then we bring it up about a foot now you've got actual ice fishing poles and, and smaller reels. Uh, they also uh, people fish with uh, pop-ups, uh -huh. which are automated uh, uh, little short poles. And when the fish tugs on it, it literally pops up a red flag. So you might have multiple holes with multiple pop-ups that you're watching from one location. But here we're just kind of using individual rod and reel in each hole. Yeah, we uh, you know we're in southeastern Indiana, so. If we get ice once a year and we can get out for five days, we're really tickled. We're really happy. This year, uh, again, this is one of our one of our coldest winters we've probably had in 20 years, and we've been able to ice fish for probably oh uh, probably two weeks uh, in southeastern Indiana, maybe even longer. You know, uh, we like to we like to get the ice at least four inches before we try to get out on it. And uh, but like I said, we've got a lot of ice. Conditions are safe. Um, so it's just been a great season. The way the weather looks, it looks like with the rest of February we're going to get right. to ice fish, which is which is unheard of for southeastern Indiana. But we have to take advantage of it when we can. And uh, so we don't have all the fancy pop ups and all the stuff like that. We just have. I don't a, even you know, know anybody yeah. that owns a, a, yeah. a fishing shack or an ice yeah. shack. Uh, they're all up in the northern part of the state. We've actually been known to take out our turkey blinds before yeah. and set them up if it gets bad. But like I said, we don't normally have that that good of opportunity. But this year has just been been tremendous we really have when the ice gets that you know we've had numerous days where the temperatures in single digits at zero and even below zero yeah. uh, and it's really been good for building up that thick ice base yeah it's uh it's been a tremendous year it's been it's tough on the wildlife i'll say that though it's yeah. uh you know it's uh give and take and uh, the deer and the turkeys you know it's uh it's tough on them but it's great for ice fishing it is it is and i think we're end up with a nice fish fry when we're done here yep i think so if uh Jeremy over there will do something. We'll, get, we'll, we'll, we'll have some, but <laughs> yeah, Troy I and I, Troy and I, have been catching all the fish. Jeremy over here, he's just been kind of just goofing around, but uh, we'll we're, see, we're see carrying what, him. Yeah, we'll see what happens here at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> carrying him. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Indiana Outdoor Adventures. <laughs> crappie. Is that crappie? Yep, first crappie of the day. Look at it, I'm drilling a hole and he's already catching crappie. 
is what you're looking for, guys. We, not very big, but it's crappie. It's the first fish. I mean, he just drilled the first hole, and he's already got a fish. You got another one on. <laughs> oh, that's a little bass. Oh my gosh, that is a little bass, but that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage here. We left the restaurant and I forgot my coat. So while Jeremy <laughs> goes back and he's got my poles, while he goes back to get my coat, Cable's already got his hole drilled and has a bass, a bluegill, and a crappie. And you've only had what line and pull for how the pull in the water for how long? Uh, three minutes. <laughs> three minutes, maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to catch a. I'm going for a channel cat and a walleye next. To get a, a five species. Yeah. Looky there, he's okay. got another one. Okay, here comes the channel cat. <laughs> oh no. Oh, another bluegill. Another nice bluegill. But you'll take it. Yeah, well, we won't throw it back. Won't kick it back in. But yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, you know. Ice fishing is that way. Sometimes you you know you, you got to catch them when the bite's going, and right now the bite's going, and Jeremy's not here, which is great. <laughs> of course, we got. I'm out here. It's like 18 degrees out. I don't have a coat or fishing pole. Jeremy's going nuts because he knows that Cable's out here fishing and getting ahead of him in the count. Yeah. And look at what he's doing. He's tearing him up. Yeah. I gotta get ahead of him as best I can. So <laughs> Jeremy, I get out here and he does pretty good. So I need to get about a 10 fish lead. Well, the way you're off to the start here, yep. almost had a fifth one on. Yeah, we'll get him here. Just give me a second. Now, we are at a different pond. Uh, we, we left the other one. We decided to come uh, try a different pond, maybe try and get some crappie. And we already have a crappie and, and a small bass. So maybe this uh, little bit larger pond uh, will give us a little larger variety and some bigger fish. Yeah, we don't know. Look you at know, this. It's just uh, it's great. Another nice bluegill. That'll work. So we'll... Uh, We'll keep at them and uh, see if we can't get into, we really want to get into a mess of crappie, but beggars can't be choosers. We'll take a mess of bluegill any day of the week. We probably got about 40 bluegill, don't you think? Yeah, oh yeah, easy 40 bluegill. Over at the other place. You know, I've got an ice fish jig on here, but I've just got a barely a little piece of wax worm left. And, hardly uh, anything on there. Hardly anything on there. And, and when they're biting, it's all it takes. I mean, if they're biting, that's all it takes. I'd say he knows how to knows how and where to drill an ice hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a little bit of luck. Now you mentioned your ice auger is an eight-inch auger. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Now, Jeremy's got a six-inch. Yeah, he's got the six-inch auger. I've got the eight-inch auger. I, I like to have the bigger hole because I catch bigger fish than Jeremy. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Of course, that's typically what it is. Yeah, you know, the the state limit is a twelve-inch hole. So if we start pulling some really big bass out yeah. here and they won't come out of the hole, we'll have to upgrade for next time. You know, we just talked to a guy a minute ago at the restaurant. We just came from a restaurant. He was out ice fishing, too, and he had a really good fish story for us. He said, uh, we caught a five-pound bass through the ice this morning. And we said, no, you didn't. He pulled his can pulled his phone out, had it on there. And it might not have been five, but it was four. It was a nice fish. Look, that's, that's a nice, nice bluegill. Bill. Yeah, yeah. It was a nice fish, and that little piece of waxworm is still on there, so we're just going to leave it on there. I would almost take my pole over uh -oh. my jacket right now because the way he's pulling these in. Yeah. I've got an extra pole there, but <laughs> no, it's, no. It's, it's here, just, here, here comes Jeremy right now. Yeah. <laughs> ah, we, I got an extra pole here, but it's it, you know it's it's only made for me, and uh, it's specially made, so I can't let anybody else use it. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeremy's going to be here with my coat and uh, my fishing pole here in just a minute. So we'll see how many we pull out. Jeremy's going to be so mad he might just drive on the ice. He might because he sees if he saw if he saw all these right here. Yeah, he's going to be so mad. It's great. Uh oh. There's one right There's there. Another one biting. See that pull belly? Oh, oh yeah. Misty. No, I got him. You did? Yeah, I got him. <laughs> That's great. Look at this. Another decent gill. Now my hole is about six, 12 feet over. Uh huh. I hope that I'm yeah. on whatever is down here that's yeah. uh, 
got all these fish attracted. I hope here. so too, Troy. I really do. I hope you have a we'll really good We'll tear them up if, the, yeah. if it is at this yeah. rate. Hey, can you tell Jeremy you left something else somewhere? Send him, send, him, send him somewhere. Nice little half three quarter pound bass. See the ice? Be nice and solid. See this cable? Yeah. I, want, I wanted you to see what a good bass looks That's like. A nice fish, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy you got him, man. <laughs> I am very happy for you. <laughs> it probably is. That's probably the biggest bluegill of the day right there. Close to it. I think you had it. Two yeah, he's got that. I only caught four fish. <laughs> but I got two biggest. right there guys that's yeah, pretty good little bass probably about a pound and a half maybe two you know what the great part about this was troy <laughs> please I caught, this, I caught this out of your hole over here the one i haven't been able to catch hardly anything yeah. out of i think because this big guy has been scaring all the bluegills off over in your hole not bad not bad we'll put him over there in my pile <laughs> Well, that wraps it up for a fun and exciting day out on the ice with our ice fishing rigs and lots of bluegill, some nice bass, and Cable even graced us with a couple of crappie. We couldn't find the big crappie hole, but man, we tore them up on the bluegill today. So we like to, we just thank the landowner as he was driving out and uh, we've had a really good time. So thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Cable. Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Project Hero and this not-for-profit organization that you're involved with? Uh, Project Hero is formed to assist other agencies uh, with emergency situations, uh, ice rescue, search and rescue missions. We go all over Indiana and anywhere else we would be needed to assist agencies. So and tell me what it stands for. Uh, Hero is the acronym for Hovercraft Emergency Response Operations. And just like we have cave rescue groups and we have uh, uh, fast water or rough water rescue groups you guys are the hovercraft rescue organization yes uh, in Indiana uh, but you do go out of state if called on sure what kind of situations have you been involved in uh, floods uh, the most recent I can think of was the big flooding in uh, Brown County in Nashville we did one day we did 23 rescues uh, during a flood scenario? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, unlike a, a boat that almost anybody can get in and control because you've got throttle and you've got a steering wheel, it takes a little bit more to learn how to fly a hovercraft. It does. But then you also offer training through Project Hero. Uh, actually, I, I train in people that are members of Project Hero, but I also teach uh, for Neoteric Hovercraft. I teach new pilots how to fly hovercraft. Thank <laughs> you.
tell me about the guys that joined us for the day. Uh, that is a rescue craft that belongs to the Perry Clear Creek Fire Department. Uh, they got interested in the hovercraft when I was doing ice rescue practice up here, and a local newspaper picked up on it, and then they found out about it uh, through the paper after they had to do an ice rescue. Well, Neoteric sells a lot of the hovercraft for uh, to fire departments and first responders and military government, a lot of these things, but you know, you don't think about there are times when you've got really rough water or you've got flooded woods or you've got ice where you just can't get a boat out for a rescue. Particularly in this case, if we had an ice fisherman that went through the ice, you can't walk out there to get him. No. You've got a hovercraft that you can go out to get him though. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of places you can go and explore that you couldn't normally go in a normal boat. Uh, you hit a sandbar, or you find the logs across the river, you can hover right over the top of them and keep going. So. What kind of limitations do you have for what you can go over? Well, you have a nine inch hover height on, on these machines and you can usually clear anything that you know is not exceeding that. And once you learn what you're doing, there are ways to get over stuff that is higher than that. Okay. Like when we were out on the lake today, there were places where the ice had kind of buckled. Uh, and some of it you were able to go right across. Some I know you slowed, braked, went over, got a little extra lift out of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, and we were able to clear some of those. Right. And that's all part of the training of, yeah. of learning, the experience of learning how to do it. We'll see you next time right here on Indiana Outdoor Adventures.